Good morning, everybody. Hello. It is Tuesday, February 1st, and we are here for my PACE intro psych class. Thank you so much for those of you who are on here with me. Uh, I see a lot of you getting logged in, getting your names in the chat, all good things. So thank you again for being here. Uh, hopefully you can all hear and see me okay. If there's any issues uh, with that, someone should uh, definitely let me know, but it all looks good on my end. Uh, I hope everyone's doing well, hanging in there. Um, sad, uh, sad morning a little bit for me. Uh, a little bit of a, like a sad weekend, right? My, uh, my favorite football dude of all time, Tom Brady, retiring, he made it official this morning. That made me sad. Mahomes lost on an interception and didn't go to the Super Bowl. Right, uh, some sad football stuff, but otherwise, uh, otherwise a great week. And uh, I can't believe we, we're almost halfway through the the semester for our class at this point. Um, so trying to uh, focus on those things, and at least on the plus side, I can have a stress-free Super Bowl for like the first time in a lot of years. Uh, I can just in, eat a bunch of good food and enjoy it, and not uh, not have to worry about who wins. So I guess. I guess I'm going for the Rams, right? Go Cooper Cup and Stafford and all of them. Uh, but anyway, um, I'll focus back. I only have two weeks left to talk about football, so I have to bring it up while I still can. But uh, thank you for those of you, again, who are here with me uh, live. Uh, we'll do our usual kind of stuff today. So we're, um, we're halfway through our weeks three and four uh, kind of section of the course. So um, I'll give you some reminders for this week. We do have exam number two this week, which I want to talk a little bit about. Uh, I'll do the extra credit question for this week as well and see if any of you have any questions for me. Uh, particularly, uh, again, we do have exam number two. So if you have any questions about that, I would be happy to answer them. So um, let's go ahead and go over to Canvas together and take a look at that. Um, again, um, my favorite way of, of kind of looking at where we're at in the course is to take a quick look at the syllabus. Totally up to you, but I, I, uh, I like the kind of snapshot that this provides. So uh, let's scroll down here and look at where we are in our class. Uh, so on that last page here, we again are right in this chunk right here. So unit two, we're in uh, week number four as of this week. So these are the things we have going on this week. But remember that everything from week three, if you haven't done it yet, um, along with the things from this week, week number four, everything is due by Sunday 2-6 at 11.59 p.m. So this Sunday at 11.59 p.m., everything from weeks three and four um, is due. So make sure if you haven't started on the materials for this week, you get going. And if you haven't started on the ones from last week, make sure to get going on that as well. So um, again, last week was chapters five and six on consciousness and learning, along with discussions five and six. And this week, um, we're moving into the topics of memory and cognition. So chapters seven and eight, uh, discussion seven, eight, and exam number two. Uh, so those are the things we'll, we'll talk a little bit about. But again, um, I like the little snapshot that that provides. So just to, to give that to you, I also, of course, send out an announcement and then email um, last night and, and all of that as well. And everything organized under this week's folder uh, is the stuff that you need to worry about. So um, all of the stuff for week three is still there. I did post the recording from last week um, in case you missed it and would like to watch it. Um, otherwise, this week, as I said, we moved to chapter seven and eight. So make sure that you read chapter seven and eight in the ebook. Right uh, again, that's how I would start if it were if it were me getting a little bit of that broad overview of what we're covering. And then you'll want to make sure that you go through the Canvas lecture and the lecture videos for those chapters. So chapter seven uh, is all about memory, right? So uh, the first page, as usual, is a summary. Uh, what is it that we'll be looking at? Page number two, beyond the book, a little bit about deja vu, which is kind of a special topic in memory. Uh, third page, in pop culture, lots and lots of movies featuring the topic of memory. Uh, here's a, a little clip that I included for you from Finding Nemo, uh, Dory being probably one of the more memorable, haha, memorable, <laughs> one of the uh, more popular uh, characters for, for memory loss uh, in, in film. Page four, as usual, is the key terms and review. These are all the key terms that you need to know from chapter seven for the exam. And then the last page application, uh, I give you a little video about how to improve 
your memory, some tips and things that are, have been shown to be helpful in memory improvement, and then a little bit about state and context dependent memory, which may or may not be helpful uh, in some of your exam preparations for this class or others. So make sure as always you double click, uh, double click, click on any videos that are in there, watch anything that's in there, click on all the links, explore everything, all of it together will really help you. You're also gonna watch the chapter seven lecture video. Uh, this is a Zoom link, so you'll wanna take notes on this, uh, make sure you're paying attention. The materials in the lecture video will definitely appear on the exam, and that's my way of uh, kind of uh, imparting that information over to you, so hopefully it's um, it's helpful. The chapter eight lecture, again, read the ebook, and then you'll click on the little lecture link that I have for you here. Uh, you read through the summary, or you can listen to it, as always, if you would rather. Uh, the Beyond the Book page, a little bit more about intelligence tests. And I did talk about this in the lecture, but um, one of your discussions this week has to do with the characteristics of a good intelligence test. This video might be really helpful for you uh, in helping to answer that uh, discussion prompt for the week, so definitely check that out. Some uh, links to uh, fun random intelligence tests online. Remember to think about, you know, are they good as you're taking them? Uh, most of them are just more for fun. In popular culture, some movies featuring language and problem solving and intelligence. The fourth page, as usual, is the, uh, are all the key terms in review, key terms that you need to know uh, from chapter eight for the exam. And the last page, um, now that you've read through the chapter, um, how could you apply this to your life? And a little bit here about how to increase your intelligence uh, and this, again, might be helpful for the discussion this week. So uh, make sure that you go through that. And then you'll also want to, of course, watch the lecture video related to chapter eight. Uh, this one is a uh, YouTube video because I don't have any outside clips in it. So you can watch it from anywhere. I try and post things on YouTube whenever possible. Uh, but make sure that you watch the lecture video, take notes. Uh, again, all of the materials in there should be pretty helpful for you for the exam um, that we have this week. So um, those are the, the two chapters to focus on. Again, reading the book, reading the lecture, and watching the lecture videos. You do have, also have two discussions, as always, for this week. Discussion number seven, if we click on that. Discussion number seven, remember um, to watch my little uh, brief video that I have here for you. Uh, to think about this almost like a mini paper, make sure you're elaborating and give me, uh, you know, really detailed responses. Uh, I gave you the feedback last week. Remember that a lot of you uh, were like a point or two away from getting full credit. So make sure you're always elaborating. Also make sure to read through a minimum of five of your classmates' posts, respond to one of them. Uh, All together, this is worth 15 points, right? 13 for my questions and two for your response to appear. But one of the topics that you're looking at this week, and this is a, a fun one to do in person, but we, um, of course, are virtual for our class. But uh, you're going to watch the video to get the 28-digit uh, sequence of letters and numbers that you're going to be working with for this discussion. If you needed to retain this 28-digit sequence and you had no way of writing it down or recording it, so you must rely solely on your memory. If you had to hold on to it for a very brief period of time, like a matter of seconds, what would be your best strategy? Describe it, right? What would you do? How would you hold on to it if you just needed it for like a matter of seconds? And what about if you needed to retain it for a longer interval, such as several days? And I said, hint, several methods for encoding and retaining information in short-term and long-term memory were discussed in the lecture and textbook. I'm looking for you to reference these methods and to reference a different method in, for your response to how you would hold on to it for seconds versus how you would hold on to it for days. Be sure to provide me with specifics, right? So if you say like, oh, I would make a story in order to hold on to it for days, what is that called? And what would your story be? I wanna hear the story, right? I gave you an example of mine in the video related to The Walking Dead. So um, how would you hold on to it for a matter of seconds? What would that look like? What is that called? Describe, and how could you maybe hold on to it for a matter of days? Um, and what would that look like? And what would that involve and describe? Then I want you to describe in detail two specific strategies discussed either in the lecture or the textbook that you could use to help you remember content when studying for an exam. And finally, do you have any personal tips for memory that you would like to share? What strategies do you use in your personal life 
to help you remember important information. Um, one for me always, whenever I'm parking, and I talked about this in the lecture, I always struggle to remember where I parked my car. And so I definitely have some little tips and things that I do to help myself remember uh, where I parked my car uh, whenever I go somewhere that's, uh, you know, bigger or more crowded. Uh, but share some of this information with me. I look forward to reading your stories or songs or methods or whatever you come up with for, for memorizing the 28 digit sequence of letters and numbers. So uh, don't forget to reply not only to me, but then also to a classmate. So let's say I really like uh, Jacqueline's strategies for utilizing um, things like chunking um, and her story, right? I love this, right? Uh, if let's say I really like her story, I could reply to Jacqueline and, uh, and put in my feedback there to get those two points. The other thing that you um, have for this week, the other discussion, discussion number eight, so discussion number eight has to do with cognition, uh, a topic that we're covering uh, this week. And I love it. I got a chance to talk a little bit about escape rooms in, uh, in the lecture for this, uh, because escape rooms are directly relevant to, uh, to this topic of cognition. I took, my, uh, I took my kids to an escape room this last weekend. We were all locked in prison together and had to escape. It was so cool. 80 minute escape room. Uh, and it was phenomenally fun. It had a slide. We had to break stuff. It was crazy, right? Uh, thinking outside the box and using problem solving, definitely things uh, related to uh, to this, this topic. So um, as always, watch my little video, right? Um, make sure you answer, respond to a peer, all the things I just reminded you with the other one. So for this one, um, we're talking about intelligence and, and so on. In your own words, how do you define intelligence? Um, you can write out a definition or, and or describe attributes or behaviors that you associate with people who are intelligent. So what is intelligence to you? What are some of the things you associate with people who you would categorize as intelligent? That could be behaviors or attributes and, and so on. What are some things you can do to increase your intelligence? I talked about this in the lecture and the Canvas lecture. And then finally, the book and lecture discuss three characteristics that a test should have to be considered a good test of intelligence. What are those three characteristics or properties? Note, in order to receive full credit, be sure to explain, define, describe each one of them enough to comp uh, demonstrate comprehension of the content. You could give me an example, uh, but definitely make sure you're defining and describing them. Uh, this is the, the bulk of the, the points for this discussion. So really spend a lot of time on this third bullet making sure that you define and describe them enough um, to demonstrate comprehension of the content. So uh, not only reply to me, but of course reply to a classmate as well. Um, the last thing that we have for this week, other than the extra credit, which I will get to in a moment, is we do have exam number two. Now remember the exams are not cumulative. So exam number two is just on everything in unit two. So it is on chapters five, six, seven, and eight. So uh, five, six, seven, and eight are the chapters. I gave you a study guide as I will always give you for the exam. Uh, remember that if it is on the study guide, it will be on the test. If it's not on the study guide, you don't need to worry about it. It won't show up on the exam at all. Uh, so again, the chapters for this week, we have chapter five, six, seven, and eight. So make sure you know all of these terms related to consciousness, everything here related to learning, all of these chapter seven terms on memory, and these chapter eight terms on cognition. Remember as well that you can use your notes and your book, but please be sure to study like you would for a traditional exam. I mentioned this to you in week number two, but if you are trying to look up every answer, trying to understand the question, look it up, find the answer, you're going to run out of time. And that is a little bit purposeful. Right, and the motivation behind that is I do want you to study and be prepared. Um, if you study and you're organized and ready to go, you'll have plenty of time and hopefully you will do quite well. Most of you did really, really well on the first exam. And so if you did good on the first exam, do the same stuff here. If you wish you had done a little bit better, this would be a really good time to uh, maybe make sure that you've written everything out on the study guide. Right, that you have defined each one of these terms and that you understand them. If it were me, I would write it all out. I would have it in front of me, organized and ready to go. That way, if I couldn't find a term or I didn't understand it, I could just reference my study guide. 
because you know that everything here will be on the test. And if it's not on here, you don't need to worry about it. So um, if it were me, I would write or type out all these terms and have it in front of me uh, just so I'm not scrambling, but uh, totally up to you. Again, a lot of you got A's on the first exam. So if you did, uh, follow the same format. It clearly worked for you. I do think this exam is a little easier in the sense that it doesn't have any diagrams, but maybe a little bit harder um, in some of the terminology. The learning unit has a lot of terminology that people sometimes struggle with. So um, maybe a little mixed, in some ways easier, some ways a little more challenging. Same format, same style. Remember when you go to take the exam, the exam is on the ebook site, like always. Uh, so if you click on exam two right here under this week, it will uh, give you a link to go to the ebook site, reminding you that it is on the ebook site to take. Uh, so make sure that you go there to take it. Uh, remember that you have 75 minutes to take the exam. You only get one attempt, so be ready, be organized, be all set to go before you begin. Make sure that you have a quiet place or as quiet as possible, good internet connection, and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, I would also really, really recommend that you don't wait till Sunday night to take the test. Uh, it always feels like when you wait to the last minute, the internet goes out, the power goes out, you have an emergency, you get sick. Uh, you know, just set yourself up for success. Try and take it a little bit earlier. You do have two full weeks to work on this, so um, really no reason uh, that you shouldn't be able to get it done in time. Ooh, look at <laughs> I found a cat! <laughs> I think I showed you Squash before. This is Squash. She's going to be really mad at me for this moment here. But I, I had to show her, right? I'm all cranky now. <laughs> if a cat could flip you off, it just happened, right? <laughs> uh, but remember um, all of those things. Uh, another thing as well, I will never trick you. So uh, you can always know that um, if something is unclear, try and read it again. Uh, you know, that's not the intention. So try and prepare and study like you would for a normal, uh, a normal test. Be prepared and ready to go. Also remember um, that when you take the exam, you will get a grade right away on the ebook site. It'll show you everything that you got right or wrong, uh, but it won't come over to Canvas automatically. So uh, if you don't see a score in Canvas until Monday of next week, don't panic. Um, that's totally normal. Uh, as long as you see a score in the ebook grade book, you're all set to go. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else about the exam. Are there any questions for me about the study guide or the exam? Anything related to the content for this week or even last week, week three, four content, the exam, study guide, anything at all that I can um, answer for you? Any questions at all? Anything that I can um, that I can help out with there? I do have a few reminders for you that I will give you while I'm waiting to see if there are any questions. Um, the first one, uh, my usual, question, or usual reminder for you, please be sure to double check your subscription status. There are a couple of you who still just only have the Twitch crown, which means you haven't linked your account uh, to my Twitch account yet. Uh, also what you'll notice because we are in week four, those of you who subscribed at the beginning of the semester, it's only good for 30 days. So if you notice that you're no longer subscribed, you might have to go back in and uh, renew it. Uh, you can do that for free and it's good for another 30 days, uh, but you might have to do that if you notice it has um, expired or, or kind of gone away. So um, just make sure to keep an eye on that, double check it. Um, double check it every week, I'll remind you every week. Um, if you're not subscribed, make sure you put your first and last name in the chat. Um, the other reminder, our next Twitch live stream will be on uh, Tuesday, 2-8 at 9.30 in the morning. So just like this week, uh, Tuesday, 2-8 at 9.30 in the morning. And that will be our week number five Twitch live stream. I'll go over some feedback and exam trends and things that I saw along with, uh, you know, going over the reminders for the next uh, fourth of the class. Somebody asked, has the school said anything about going to school in person? Nothing over the last week. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, they sent out that email that um, all classes that were supposed to be in person should be going back on Valentine's Day, February 14th, that week. Um, I haven't heard anything since. There's been no update 
Uh, we have all of this week and next week virtual for those of you. Um, this class is virtual no matter what, so we're not we're not going back in person. But if you did sign up for an in-person class, uh, it still sounds like it's going to be the 14th as long as things don't change. Of course, there are new variants. There's the what uh, Omicron BA2 stealth Omicron variant now, and then the NeoCov one that they discovered in Africa. Uh, there's so many new variants and things. So um, of course it could change at any time, but those of you who did sign up for in-person, it sounds like it's supposed to be uh, February 14th that you go back. This class again, 100% virtual, uh, but yeah, nothing nothing since then. So that is the only uh, information that I have. Okay. Um, the other thing I do have for you is the Twitch extra credit question. So let me give that to you uh, for today so you can get those points. Uh, this is something related to the topic of memory that we are covering this week. So the Twitch Extra Credit question for week number four, and put this in the chat here. Uh, what does it mean that our memory, our short-term memory, can hold seven plus or minus two pieces of information? What does it mean that our short-term memory can hold seven plus or minus two pieces of information? And that's something that I talked about in the lecture. It's also in the textbook. Um, of course, you're welcome to look it up online, but I answered that for you in both of those things. When you're ready to answer that, if you'd like to, you go back to Canvas. And since we're in week four, you'll click on Twitch extra credit number four right here. And then up at the top, my computer's going slow right now. Um, you'll click on start assignment. And this is due before Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. Uh, you can type your response in the text box below. Type your response. And then when you're done, you'll hit submit assignment. You get the little confetti burst and let's see what else. Confetti burst and fire. <laughs> confetti burst and flames. So this is due again before Sunday night. If you answer it early and get it wrong, um, I will let you know and you'll have another um, opportunity to try again, but uh, feel free to do this. It's two points of extra credit, especially those of you who are uh, who are here with me live. You know, keep doing this. Those points will add up. It will help make up for a missed discussion or maybe uh, a couple of questions on an exam or, or whatever. Uh, remember that I will also post the recording of this when we're done today. It takes a couple of hours, but later today um, I will post the recording from this live stream uh, right here where it says Twitch week number four. So uh, make sure that you get going on all the materials for this week. If you haven't done the stuff from last week, of course, do that as well. But you have uh, all of these, uh, chapter seven and eight, discussion seven and eight, exam two, and then Twitch extra credit number four. So um, that is, I think, everything that I have to, to share with you. If you have any questions, I will hang out for a little while. I'd be happy to answer them. Um, I might go grab one of my cats that are all like hanging around and drag them into the stream. See how many cats I can pull into one stream today. But um, otherwise, I hope you all have a fantastic week. Take care of yourselves. Enjoy the Pro Bowl that we have this week um, if, you, if you're into football like me. Otherwise, um, again, I will hang out for a little while if you do have any questions. And I will see you next Tuesday morning at 930 for our week number five live stream. So uh, I'm going to uh, minimize my video here, but again, I will hang out for a little bit. If you have questions about the exam, the study guide, the class, anything at all, I am happy to answer them for you. So um, again, take care of yourselves, try and stay healthy, stay safe, and I will hopefully see you all next Tuesday morning. Okay, so I am still here, uh, but I, I'm just minimizing that video so I'm not staring at myself. Otherwise, again, have a wonderful week. And if you have any questions, I'm, I'm still here. You're welcome. Thank you as well. Thank you for being on here with me. Of course, you're welcome. Thank you, too. I appreciate the company and the, the comments and questions. Thank you all for, for being here with me today. Of course, you as well. Have a great week. And if I hear anything else about, um, you know, whether we're going back or not, I will definitely let you all know next week.
though that again doesn't affect our class, <laughs> just so nobody's confused. You're welcome. Have a great week. All right, it looks like everybody's gone. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this up so that I can uh, post the recording of it. If you have any other questions or think of anything later, feel free to email me. Otherwise, again, have a fantastic week and I'll see you all next uh, next Tuesday morning.